We're gonna fall back, hit a camp, life steal off of it. So not only do you get some life whenever you use your one onto the camp, you're also getting some regen from the Assassin's Blessing, and you're also getting some regen from Thanatos himself. Four people super weak, we gotta go for something here. We get the one, we're gonna keep rotating. We're gonna use the two for increased movement speed. We're going for this Cthulhu. We get the pick onto him. Thor is going to ult out. Oh, that was so close to a triple. This rat's pretty tanky. So we're just going to fall back. I don't think there's a whole lot we're going to be able to do in that situation. What a do, Scooby Doo Boo? It's your boy Shawnee B Gaming, and today we have a viewer request to play Thanatos as Jungle. If you are new to the channel, I upload six to seven times a week. I add some commentary to a game that I've already played with the intention of seeing what went right and what went wrong. And hopefully there's something that we can learn together and reduce this smite learning curve. If you are a returning viewer, Thanatos is absolutely disgusting early game and if you can get a lead with him, he can snowball very hard into the mid and late yes. game. And I absolutely love this skin, I can turn into Thanatos. So let's go ahead and review Thanatos' abilities. Thanatos is one, he's going to shoot a line attack. This line attack is going to deal an additional 10% of the target's maximum health okay. if they are an enemy god. It's going to consume 5% of Thanatos' current HP to use this ability. And whenever it hits an enemy god, they're going to be slowed for 3 seconds. Then with Thanatos' 2, it's going to increase his movement speed and it's going to make him immune to slow effects. And it's also going to give him physical penetration up to 6 seconds. So at level 1 you're going to get 15 penetration and at level 5 you're going to get 35 penetration. Level 1, 10% speed. Level 5, 30% speed. And then whenever we go to his 3, his third ability is going to be a cone attack that is going to silence enemies. This ability is also going to consume 5% of your health along with the 1 and 2 anytime you use it. So right here we started at speed and then went to blue. We had our jungler start on blue. This allows us to rotate to mid a little bit faster. So Thanatos is ultimate. He's going to fly into the sky. Up, oh, we got a little bit of a tussle coming up. She's pretty weak. If I can hit her with my one, that's probably a pick. Thor goes in hard. He just used his dash. I'm gonna move in on Thor, Thor keeping an eye on the Rama as well, taking some damage. I'm gonna get the silence. Our Rom's able to get the first blood. I'm able to get the pick onto the Rom in mid and get a double onto the Thor. Absolutely ex excellent start. And we have plenty of health and mana for invading their red buff. So Thanatos is ultimate. Thanatos is going to fly into the sky and then he's going to be able to see enemies. If enemies are below a certain health threshold, they're going to be marked. If Thanatos lands on a marked enemy, they're going to be executed and Thanatos is going to heal for 20% of their maximum HP. If they are above this health threshold, then you're going to stun them. The health threshold starts at 24% at level 1 and goes all the way up to 40% at level 5. And Thanatos is passive. Enemy, Enemy gods hit with his ultimate, executes health threshold, or revealed to Thanatos. Dealing a killing blow to an enemy also empowers Thanatos, healing him based on the max HP of his target and reducing his active cooldowns. Additionally, all of Thanatos' abilities cost health and mana to use. The HP restore on a god is 20% of the target's maximum HP, and the cooldown reduction if you execute a god is 5 seconds for all of your other abilities. So another important thing that I want to point out is that Thanatos has an attack chain. He has a 3 chain attack chain. It's going to be a single hit, single hit, and then a cleave that can hit multiple enemies. Whenever you are clearing jungle camps, you want to make sure that you are taking advantage of this cleave hit at the end of your attack chain. We do have our ultimate, so we're going to look to relieve a little bit of pressure in this left lane. We're going to go ahead and ult in. We see that there's two people. We're going to go ahead and land, land our one onto the Freya. 
Now we're going to focus the Thor. We should be pretty safe. I don't think he has the damage potential to really burn me down. So we're going to take a look at invading their blue. See if it's up. It looks like it's up. Take their blue, and that should really help out the Kamazots in this lane because Freya requires a lot of mana. Rom is a little pushed up in mid. We might be able to make a good rotation here. These are two. Get that penetration, increase movement Not speed. Even breaking a sweat. Our team's hit him with this. the two. Or we use the two, hit him with the three, hit him with the one, and we're gonna go ahead and fall back. Wow, it's kind of really all of our damage. That is very nice. Their damage is probably up. We are feeling pretty big. I don't think their Rama is really gonna be able to contest it, so we're going to invade it, and it looks like Thor is already here. We're gonna use our three on Thor. We're gonna use our one. And we're able to steal their red. Their Thor is very weak. We could probably get a pick on him as well. For some reason this game, we went with Aegis instead of Blink. Not entirely sure why. Usually I go Blink as jungle. I guess this game I realized the Thor, the Rat, Kukulin, not Kukulin, Cthulhu, and Freya. They all have very damaging abilities. And if I get an Aegis, it might save me early on. That was probably my logic behind it, but let's go ahead and review the build because we're about to go into our boots. So we started with Assassin's Blessing, and then we're going to be building into the Sledge. I'll get into that in just a minute. Once we back and have enough money for boots, we're going to want to go into Warrior Tabai. So the 40 power that Thanatos gets off of Warrior Tabai is a pretty large power spike early on. Thanatos has penetration built into his kit, so naturally there is a 50 flat 10 cap in Smite. So if you were to buy an item like Jotun's Wrath, that's going to give you 15 flat 10. And then if you look at Thanatos' 2, fully maxed out, it's going to give you 35 pen. So 35 plus 15 equals 50 pen, which is the cap. So you really don't need a whole lot of penetration on Thanatos, or at least flat pen, because he has some built into his kit already. We're going to go ahead and ult middle, we land onto the Rama, we use our 3, we get his beads, we use our 1 on him, connect them before he's able to ult up into the sky. We're able to get an assist over to the Yamoja. So the 40 power from the boots is a pretty large power spike. It's going to allow you to do a very large amount of damage pretty early on. It does not take a lot of power on Bonitos. It only takes about 40. So the item after Warrior Tabai we're going to be going into is the Sledge. Right now, the Sledge has just too many good stats to really pass up. It's a really cheap item. We're able to confirm the Gold Fury. It's a really cheap item. It's going to give us... 40 power, I believe, could be 30. It's going to give us some health. It's going to give us crowd control reduction, CCR. So what is CCR? CCR, if you are stunned for a second and you have 20% CCR, you're actually only going to be stunned for 0.8 seconds. The cap for CCR is 40%. And the sledge is going to give us 20%. So it's going to make us a little bit healthier. It's going to give us a decent amount of power. It's going to give us a noticeable amount of power. And it's passive. Whenever we are near enemy gods, we're going to gain protections based on how many enemy gods we are near. We're going to have to fall back a little bit. We took too much damage in that engagement. And the sledge also has that CCR that we were talking about. Save yourself. So because this item has so many good stats, it is being picked up quite a bit in the solo lane, and it's even being picked up on a few assassins. Assassins who are ability based assassins and don't really take advantage of the golden blade tree um, could really benefit from the sledge. Sledge is going to make them a little bit tankier in the beginning, and it's also going to allow them to get out of CC a little bit easier. We're going to go ahead and ult. We know this Freya is under half health. She doesn't need to be below the execution threshold. We're going to get our one off. We're going to get our three off. And we're able to get the pick onto the Freya. 
unfortunately, we were not able to make it in time while the Kamazos was still alive, but we were able to get a pick onto the Freya, which should relieve the pressure in this lane, and Thanatos should be able to get here before not her, and then get some pressure. Our team's got this. Yeah. So we're gonna hit this blue with Kamazots. Not that it matters, we weren't gonna clear it before he got here, but Thanatos, I mean, not Thanatos, Kamazots really benefits from being able to land his two onto the jungle camps. So if it is possible, you want to allow your Kamazots to do that before destroying the camp. So right now, we are having an excellent Thanatos game. Great early start. Really took advantage of picking this early aggressive they god. Like you when you're angry. We're gonna go ahead and hit our red buff. We were able to invade their ref red buff a couple times this game. However, right now it doesn't really seem worth it. Plus, it is down. So now that we have the timer on the enemy red buff, it might be a idea to try to invade it on this next go. Cthulhu is very weak on the right side. I'm about to have my ultimate. I'm starting to position myself. Bear your souls to me. He's so weak, I should be able to just yep, throw my one and get the pick that way. We're getting rotated on. We're going to use our two to get the increased movement speed. So your leveling order, at level one, you want to put a point into your three. That way you have fast jungle clear. You can deal that damage to all of the minion camps compared to his one, where you'd only be able to hit the one minion. Then we're going to want to put a point into his one, point into his two, max out his one, max out his two, and then max out his three, putting a point into his ult whenever you can. So that is a Rama ult. We missed our one. The one probably would have gotten him. Here comes a Thor. That was unexpected. That's a lot of damage. We're going to have to fall back. We're dodging around a little bit. We need to land our one on something. We could have hit this minion. And that would have given us a decent amount of health. We did not expect the Ratatasker to come from behind. A little bit of bad positioning there. Probably very preventable. We got very aggressive onto that Rama. And whenever he ulted, we probably should have realized that the enemy team was rotating in. And that we could have just wait under him to come back down indefinitely. I remember at this point in the game, I was like, oh, I guess I need to show this team a little bit more respect. Can't just run around slaying them. So after getting the sledge online, we're going to be going into Erendite. Erendite is going to give us 75 power. It's also going to give us 10% cooldown, and it has a passive that is very useful. After we ult, it's going to reveal all the enemy gods, and then the... Item is also going to give you mo increased movement speed right after ulting, and whenever Ultimate you hit an enemy with your basic attack, it's up. going to deal 40 plus 30% of your physical power. We ult, Freya is pretty weak, she ults, see if we can time it right, just short, we're going to go ahead and use our 2 to get the increased penetration and remove the slow from Freya. She has a lot of lifesteal, I was afraid of trading that. I think she probably would have won that in that situation, so I go ahead and fall back. Come on, you gotta do better than She's that. She's healing off of wave, but she is still gettable. Double kill. We're gonna throw our one, that misses. We use our three, that misses. Now we're in a bit of a bad spot. We're gonna go ahead and fall back. Be careful. We're gonna back, pick up our Erendite. Even the tower, and then we're going to pick up some multi potions, even though we probably just need mana potions. With Thanatos, if you have mana, you have a means of getting your health back. You can keep landing your one on things and keep regenerating. So it's really helpful to have some mana. We're going to rotate with the Rama, see if we can help secure this gold fury. Make sure no one rotates in. Wow, you're really good at this. He got very weak, but we are able to bring it over and tank it for him so he can confirm it. Rat is in mid. Might be able to do something here. Try to get our basic off. We timed that pretty bad. We should have used our three as soon as we saw the top hit his stun. Prevent him from dashing away. 
three-man grouped in mid. Rom's rotating. We might be able to pressure him and prevent him from coming mid. We're going to use R2 to get some increased movement speed, see if we can't cut him off. We use R3 onto the rat. We miss R1. We're going to fall back because we're on cooldown. Freya's here. Freya is a little scary. So we're going to go ahead and fall back. We want to make sure our Umoja can get out. We do have our ultimate, if need be. We're going to go back in. Cthulhu did ult, so I see Cthulhu ulted and they all grouped back. My team fall back, so the spacing between my teammates and the enemy team was increasing, meaning that it was a bad time to pull in into three people. So we're gonna hit our speed, make our way over to blue, hit the chalice. It looks like Kamazot's actually just going to solo blue, so we're just gonna go mid. That does cost me a little bit of gold and XP, however, that's fine. I'll just be able to solo it. He'll get the full gold and XP without having to split it. So hopefully that helps him out as much as it potentially harms me. Freya is very far pushed up. We have our team rotating in. Did not mean to use that three. Did not mean to open chat right there. I will cut you down. So that's her ultimate. Here's the one. We get the pick. The strategic open up the chat to type something in while Freya uses her ultimate strategy. So since nobody's over here and we have a three man stack, we're just gonna push this tower. One thing I did not do enough this game was turn into Toast. Definitely should have done that a little bit more, especially in moments where we're waiting around for a minion wave. We do have our ultimate. Two people are over here. They're full health, so we're going to be kind of careful on how we engage it. We use our three, that is able to silence out the rat. Thor uses his hammer. And his wall. Rat's pretty weak, we do have our ultimate. Rat pops a med, so they have the health. We're gonna land onto this Freya. Or the Rom, we got the pick onto the Rom. We're gonna fall back, Freya's in the back line. We get knocked up by Cthulhu. Cthulhu is doing some serious damage, but it looks like we were able to get out with the increased movement speed from our two. We're gonna fall back, hit a camp, life steal off of it. So not only do you get some life whenever you use your one onto the camp, you're also getting some regen from the Assassin's Blessing, and you're also getting some regen from Thanatos himself. Four people super weak, we gotta go for something here. We get the one, we're gonna keep rotating. We're gonna use the two for increased movement speed. We're going for this Cthulhu. We get the pick onto him. Thor is going to ult out. Oh, that was so close to a triple. This rat's pretty tanky. So we're just going to fall back. I don't think there's a whole lot we're going to be able to do in that situation. But that was a nice little double. Wish we could have cleaned up a little bit more. We almost got the triple onto the Thor. We were kind of just hiding around that corner to see if they would overstep. They did not. So we missed some abilities and we're going to fall back. We have a pretty penny in the pocket. So we're gonna go ahead and back and spend that bad boy on some Hydra's Lament. So this item is not necessary in the build. I thoroughly enjoy the playstyle of Hydra's Lament. You'll land an ability or cast an ability and then you land a basic attack for bonus damage. When you, th when you ult in as Thanatos, you can apply a stun. While they're stunned, you can immediately land your basic attack. That's going to activate the items of Erendite, and it's also going to activate Hydra's Lament. So yeah, that next basic attack is going to be dealing some serious damage. This way, we can use our ultimate aggressively to land and stun a weak target, get a lot of their health down, and not have to worry about just using our ultimate for execute. Bit of a team fight going on, so we're going to land in. Not the best ultimate. We're going to have to fall back. Freya's nearby. We miss our one. We're really going to have to fall back now. Rats on us. We use our two. But those three people converging on us, they were able to get the pick. 
That wasn't the best ultimate. I landed on one person when I was aiming for two, and then I missed some abilities on Freya, and the enemy team was able to clean me up for my mistakes. Our, Ram our Rama and Toth are on point. Our team was able to get the D aside. I remember watching this and thinking there's no way that this Rama can possibly get this gold period. And oh boy was I wrong. Absolutely beautiful. He's just trading the aggro. As soon as he's weak, he backs up, gets the gold fury to reset, life steals off of it while it's being reset, and then he starts attacking him and he immediately falls back. Very smart play, Mr. Rama. Very smart play. So Rama is a level 20. He's pretty huge right now. We're next closest at level 17. Go ahead and drop the red buff. Gold Fury is down. We could make a play for Fire Giant. The enemy Rama's enemy ult just now. went off. Yes. He just landed. Not sure what that was about. He might have been doing it just to get some vision, or he might have misclicked one or the other. So we have 20% cooldown right now. 10 from Erendite and 10 from Hydras. After going into Hydras, we're going to be going into Heartseeker. Heartseeker is going to provide us 10% physical penetration. It looks like we're going to go in and ult right here. Freya is an excellent target. What are these immunes? Oh, Rat almost went down, but he was able to ult away. Rat lands on us. We use our Aegis. We use our 1, we get the pick onto Rat, we're going to use our 2 to get the increased movement speed, we use our 3 to get the silence, and we're able to get a basic off. We land the 1 onto the Rama, but Rama and Kikulu are able to get us. We did some good damage, we just could not tank the Rama shot. He was going to be able to out damage me while I was on cooldown. May the scales favor you. So we got our Heart Seeker online. Heart Seeker is also going to provide us some physical power. And whenever we deal damage to an enemy with an ability, they're going to take bonus damage equal to 3, up to 6% of the enemy's max health. And then the next ability is going to deal 75% bonus damage. Heart Seeker is a fantastic item on a lot of ability assassins. It's going to make it to where you can do relevant damage to tanks as soon as you have it online. And it's also going to provide you a 10% physical penetration buff that will help with shredding the tanks. But the passive alone should really help with tank shred. Bear your souls to me. So I feel like this is a kind of standard build on some ability assassins right now. It does vary per god a little bit here and there. But the sledge provides such overwhelming stats in the early game and it's so cheap that it's pretty much your defensive, offensive hybrid item Ultimate for the entire game. Bonitos is very strong in the early game, so I feel like we could sacrifice a little bit of early game power in order for some utility. We land on the Freya, get some great damage off. We're able to burn her down really quick, get the double onto the Thor. Lots of doubles this game. We're gonna move in on this Cthulhu, but he's able to dash out. We miss our one. Rat and Cthulhu are nearby. We don't have sight on the enemy Rama, but it is probably time to move for the Fire Giant. We are able to push them out of left jungle, and there's only three people left, none of which have excellent heal potential. Ron does with his ult, Rat does with his ult, but those aren't the most damaging abilities. We're able to get the Fire Giant while they were moving in. Rat or Caster does ult. Looks like he's aiming for me. We use our 3 to get the silence, we use our 1, but we got rooted by Cthulhu. Ultimate is down. Rama is up in the air on the enemy team, he came down, looks like he is about to go down. Not even breaking a We're gonna go ahead and our ult. Got Land on the Freya, who Not just responded, hit her with our 1. Oh no, we got 
just CC'd to death right there. Even the 20% CC reduction was not enough. Rom's able to get a pick. We're gonna sell our Assassin's Blessing and we're gonna be going into Titan's Bane. Titan Bane is going to provide us 20% physical penetration and the first ability cast is going to deal an additional 20% physical penetration. So even though I am down, we are going to be able to close out this game right here. If you guys enjoyed the video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you feel like you learned anything at all, please check out some of the other content on the channel and subscribe for more. The stats for this game will be posted in just a second. If you ever have a question or want to see a god played, please join the Discord server and reach out to me there. Thank you for stopping by. I hope you have a great day. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.